Hey guys, this is Ravenclaw What If. Welcome back to another What If story. Now this one is What If Female Deku had a wolf mutation quirk. This is going to be a good portion of the story. It's going to be in um, the, uni uh, the Ruby universe. And um, she'll eventually get back to the UA universe and because UA is in a college in my what if, so I got plenty of time to do the whole Ruby thing, then have her go back and do the Hero Academia thing. So this is going to be, you know, this is going to be a big, ep this is going to be a big series because I'm planning to, not sure how far in the Ruby universe I'm going to go through, through, uh, through the seasons, because I know some of the seasons I didn't, I like the most newer ones I didn't really like too much, but if you guys want to see that, I'll go through the whole Ruby series. Then when she hits like the age of, you know, like 18, 19, that's where she could, you know, do the UA thing. I might have her go back to the UA universe. Maybe when she was 17 or 18. I'm not totally sure on that. Yeah. Okay. And, um, Kennedy, the product, the female Deku, it's literally, she's going to be the daughter of Salem. So let's get that straight off the bat. I was originally going to do the adopted daughter, but with the white part of her hair and with silent with Salem after she gets, uh, duck after she goes into the grim pole comes all, you know, albino and, you know, straight up uses sorcery. So, <laughs> so apparently going to, uh, Black liquid of evil equals magic. So whatever. So you know the hell that is. Now, if you have noticed the sorry from Undertale, the Gaster Blasters, that's going to be part of her semblance. She's going to have a cork and a semblance. So that's just how I'm. Is oh, I originally was just going to have her just have the. Gastropasta has part of her cork, but it would make sense she would have a semblance too, because, you know, she's the daughter. The most recent daughter that she didn't master, she didn't kill. So she, I know she had a bunch of kids. So I read on her backstory a little more, because I didn't really get really far into the newer seasons of Ruby. So I don't, that's, yeah, that's, I didn't know that until I did some more research on Salem. For this specifically, what if? What I'm going to do to Inko, it's very, you know, messed up. But <laughs> this is how this is going to work. So let's get into what weapons I'll be giving her. Now, this is going to be her weapon. To, uh, I think it's pronounced like the sword chain or the sh sword whip. I thought that was cool because I used to play. Uh, I used to play Soul Caliber. I used to use a uh, character. Uh, I think her name is Ivy. Her dad's like a you know, a evil space not space pirate but <laughs> a pirate. If you know about the game, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I thought her weapon was really awesome. This the sword whip. You're coming your opponent and you're just using the sword normally. Then you use the freaking whip part of it. Yeah, that could so mess some people up. So good for like close range and mid range combat. Maybe far range to a certain point. It depends on how long I make the sword whip in this. Now Salem's gonna give um, Kennedy the ability to shift into an animal. So it's going to be a uh, wolf. I'm thinking about making it like into like a, you know, a, a crossbreed between a grim and, and a wolf. This is what it's going to look like because it's the only picture I found on short notice. Because I had this idea for a little bit, but one of my subscribers, you know, mentioned, mentioned that, that same idea. So I just couldn't find a good, good, a good picture for it. So, but I found it uh, that I'm going to use for this series. That's what she's going to look like when she's younger in her wolf form, you know, because when she's a kid. 
And this is going to be her, um, when she, you know, grows up to, to the point where, um, the whole, you know, Ruby universe starts the, the canon storyline. That's a little bit bigger, but not by much. Because I want to, she'll be able to use her gaster blasters in this form as, as well. Going to explain about her, her ultimate attack is what San, uh, Sans is doing in this one. His gaster blasters goes on her hands as she uses it. She can use it for physical, uh, 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 physical attacks or long range high beams attacks, you know, because what uh, gaster blasters do, you know, they charge up and release a mouth of energy. So, <laughs> but that's why I'm picking them. So that she's able to do. And her, um, when she uses her gaster blasters, her blue eye glows like sands. Scratch that. Her both, let's just say her both eyes glow as like in the picture. That's when she uses her, her gaster, her, her blasters. Now the ship is Blake. So she's on the thumbnail. So that's a big giveaway, but yeah, that's what it is. I originally was going to do a scythe weapon, but I want to do, I, I, sorry. I want to wait on that until I do another one like this, but that will be um, a Ruby ship. So I'm going uh, to save for that one for later. Now, considering the ship is Blake, I'm going to have to have her go into, uh, I think it's called Beacon Academy. I think that's what that's called. It's been a while since, it's been like, you know, a little bit, almost a week since I've seen the section I rewatched for this, um, for my other what if that evolves in the Ruby universe. And I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to pair them up as a team. I know um, Yang and her pair up and Cannon, but I'm going to, don't know how I'm going to do this. Okay, I figured it out. Okay, um, this, to explain what's how, 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 um, how I'm going to work this is... When the exam happened, they all three look at each other. So Osbin had no choice but to, you know, make them a team, a partner team. So it's a partnership of three, first of Beacons Academy ever. It's very unusual. Now, she does have a mutation quirk. So um, she's going to easily be mistaken for a Faunus. I think that's what they're called. They're beast people in that universe. I think they're called Faunus. I'm not totally sure on that. Leave a comment down below if I'm mistaken, because I believe that's what they're called. Until I'm corrected otherwise, I'm going to use Faunus. So she'll be easily mistaken for a Faunus because of her uh, animal features. She has no human ear. She has only um, the ears on top of her head. She has fangs, claws. She has superior strength reflexes, speed, and the senses all together. Some, some, uh, tracking, she's, uh, you know, she's a wolf, or, you know, she's part wolf, whatever. She has a wolf mutation. Now, how am I gonna get this work? Um, Asashi has the same quirk, but his family has wolf mutations. It just skipped one generation. He just skipped that part of him, all his family. And how I'm going to make this crossover work. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> there are certain Grimms that's outside of Salem's control. I know, I think she's able to create them. I know she has like some sort of like link with them where she could like, she could uh, look through the Grimm's eyes or something like that. Like I said, I haven't watched like the full on the new seasons fully. So, so how I'm going to get this, how I'm going to work this 
And sorry about so much information. It's already nine, almost 10 minutes, and I haven't gotten into the episode yet. My apologies, but there's a lot of information I have to relay. So you know what's go- how, um, how the story is going to go. How it all works in my mind, at least. They're able to... Um, these specific ones are able to use a portal, but the portal leads to UA, the, to the Hero Academia world. Sorry, Hero Academia universe. They're just able to go back and forth. They can use the portals to attack, like um, Salem. I think her assimilance is a portal, but I'm not totally sure. I think that's what I said on on her power set when I was looking up on back backstory on the wiki or the fandom wiki or, or whatever. Oh, we're going to start our episode off sometime after the events of Salem massacring her own family. A, a lot of time has passed during, I don't know, like, because I know she's immortal, so they didn't really give me, you know, I couldn't find, like, the time span of what to happen beforehand, but I know that was probably, probably pretty long ago, I think it was. After she took a nice dip in, uh, you know, crazy water. Turn out a sorceress, so I don't know how that worked, but, you know, that's how the canon story goes, so I guess for the skull is it. Ow. <coughs> she is in midst of beginning her, um, her campaign to kill Osmond and to locate, you know, the maidens and find the relics. She's in the midst of beginning a few new a uh, few first steps in her con- on her mission to destroy Osmond and all around him as she begins as she begins the thought idea of popping her head to gain pawns for her mission as she as she you know Gets information on certain people and the whole nine yards, what she did to get her, you know, pawns into place. She knows where Cinder is, but she's not going to interact with her for right now. She's going to let things progress further before she introduces herself to her. But as she's thinking, she's like, I need a guarantee. She wants a, a loyal pawn. That will follow her qu- her orders without question, and eliminate any traitors that try to go against her in the near future. Some time has passed as some of her grim has been acting a little strangely, as some grim in her immediate area has been you know dying off. As she goes in to investigate it personally, as she opens a portal, as she steps through it. Oh, sorry. As she sees a scene where it has three of these wolves, grim, growling, circling around a green hair woman. As suddenly one of the grims get thrown back into a tree, a Salem, you know, Thinks that her semblance. As Inko's holding her shoulder, her right shoulder, because of the wolf of the Grim Bite, she got bit pretty hard. Bits. Um, she got clawed pretty hard. Not too deep, but that wound is. I, 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 I'm sorry. Small pause. I don't know what, like, I don't remember if. If you get bit or um, slashed by Grim, if there's some sort of after effects from it. It's been a while, and I haven't got really big into the first... I've been rewatching it, so I haven't got really far into the series yet again, so I don't remember. So my bad if it does. doesn't matter, so let's continue. As she sees the scene, as she's a... Ve- uh, She's observing the situation as she's thinking in her head. 
these grim are interesting. I'm only interested in the grim, but this gives me an opportunity. If I come into the rescue, maybe I could use her some away to to further on in my plans. As you know, uh, I forget her name, Salem. She uses people as pawns to throw away. That's just for her goals. That's just what um, her personality set is. So, as she, sorry guys, um, as she changes her, um, well, I don't know what her form shoot. I'm just gonna give her this because it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, a important part in the beginning, straightly including this. Well. It's going to come important how this is all going to click together. As she form, she morphs into her um, human form. That's magic. So, you know, because of that. Illusion of her human form. So she doesn't scare Inko. She wants to ease into this. See what she knows and what she could use for her benefit. As she's using magic. In the picture, she throws um, the black energy ball things. I'm not sure what what spears. I'm not really sure on her power base. I need to look at her fights a little more closely. But we'll worry about that later. As she throws these black orbs, as they, I'm just gonna make them OP as hell because you know why not. As it kills one of the gram, as it vaporizes in a dust. Salem, you know, and Inko take out the rest of the Grim. She's still able to fight a little bit. Her quirk is very powerful in this, but that doesn't matter. As Inko's, thank you, who who are you? As, she, as she's like, where am I? As Salem's thinking, she's quite talented. She's no hunts. She's no hunt, uh, huntress, though. We'll see. We'll see what, what information I get, I could get out of this one. Then I'll kill her. Now Salem's not going to kill her un, until she what she knows she could use her for. When she's no longer useful, she's going to kill her. Salem reached out her hand to Inko to grab it. Hi, I'm Salem. <coughs> as she's putting a fake smile on, as she's like, "Are are you alright?" As she's like, "Yeah, I'm fine." Um, where am I? This wasn't the place. I was in a city before. As Salem's like, "What do you mean? I was in town. I was getting groceries before um for the months because my husband's going to be out for my husband because he's coming in." For a few days. From over from um from work. He had some stuff into his office. I don't know. As Sam's like, where are you from exactly? As she's like, Japan. As As Sam's interested. Tell me about this Japan. I'm curious. I might know where you are depending on if I know the lo location you're talking about. So Inko and and Salem are talking. As uh, Salem is bandaging Inko up, just for reasons she had, you know, medical supplies on her for some reason. Inko, so so she gets to run down of corks, and sometimes animals could possess it. And her backstory and her relate her relationship with Asashi. As she gets a little idea in her head. As one of the wolves was playing possum. As it waited the, the right opportunity to strike. As it chomps down on one of Inko's, um, her collar on her shirt. As it grabs her, jumps back as the portal opens. As Sam's, I don't think so. 
as Salem, you know, as the portal closes, as Salem tries to rush into, go into it, as they disappear, as Salem is vividly upset because she put some effort into this and she's not going to have her effort by way some some lowly grim that doesn't know its place. As she connects the portal where it's going, as she reopens it, as she pops out of the portal, as she's in the Yui universe, as she's in the maze by the technology of um, the civilization at at UA universe, whatever, J- Japan. The wolf was about to chomp on her neck as it pinned her to the ground, going for the killing blow. As Salem appeared somehow behind them, as she basically swooped that wolf up using her magic, you know. she had, I saw her, you know, fling people around like it's nothing. So, yeah, she has, like, magic like that. So, as she tosses the gram as she, you know, decides to kill it. As they were in the back alley somewhere, as Salem goes over to Inko. Are you all right, Inko? Uh, yeah, well, I'm back home. As Inko's excited, as Salem's like, yes, I'm curious about this Japan. As she's like, as the thought comes to her head, Inko's like, but what, what, what about you? What about your world? Unfortunately, as you know, Salem lies. Unfortunately, I'm stuck here. Whatever that creature was, I'm trapped at your world now. So I'm just have to make the best of the I'm just have to make the best of a bad situation. As Inka's like, why don't you stay with me and with my husband? I'll explain everything. Try to, at least. Husband's a little stubborn sometimes. As Salem, you know, uh, uh, agrees to this. She's still in her human state illusion. So Salem spends some time with the Midorias. Getting to know them as she already knows what she's going to do. She's just getting all the information out of their lives. She knows of um, Asashi's um, family line where they, the mutation skip, skip a generation. So she's like, interesting. As she's like, Faunus. As Inko's like, what? Um, nothing. It's nothing. It's what we call someone from where they... Uh, Inko didn't tell him the whole truth to Osashi, but... To make it believable. Uh, where I'm from, we call mutations... The country where I'm from, we call the... We call the mutation... Um, people with animal mutations, Faunus. As Asashi, oh, okay, I, I, I understand now. As an Inko and Asashi's backstory, Inko met Asashi when he was uh, still doing hero work, but as soon as they started dating and they decided to get married, Asashi re, uh, retired from his uh, role as a hero. He was, he was not level. He was pretty good. He was like. Let's say, like, let's say, like, fifth or fourth on the hero ranking scale. That's because. That's why I could have Salem take an interest in the plan even more if Asashi's strong. As Salem's asked Asashi to demonstrate his, um, his quirk outside, and he still has his um license. He always re uh he always renews it just in case for emergencies, for um life and death situations, to save Inko and and stuff like that. So as she sees it, as she could be mistake it for the um, fire maiden's powers, but. Men can't be a maiden, I think. Doesn't make no sense if a man can. So, yeah. Let's just say in the story, only females could be maidens. I don't know much about the maiden lore about um, Ruby Universe. So, 
let us continue on. Now, during this time, Asashi has to go. He has to go on a business trip. So he's going to be gone for a couple weeks. And Salem informed uh, Midoriya that she'll most likely be gone when Asashi gets back. So Salem says her goodbyes as she smiles as Inko and her spend some more time together. As when the day finally happens, Inko asks Salem, "What's going on? Where are you going?" And she's like, "Explained. I had I had a family emergency. I have a family emergency I have to go to, but I won't leave until Asashi's going to be gone for like four weeks. So I'll be here for at least two weeks. Then, then I don't know what. No, she doesn't have a family emergency because she's not out, out of this world. No." She tells her she found a way back. As Inko, really? As, yeah, I'll spend these two weeks with you, and then I'll head home, head back to my world so you don't get too lonely. Your husband do, does work a lot. As Inko and um, Bond, they bond a little bit. Well, Inko bonded, not so much as Salem. She says, oh, I just want to, she's just irritated that she has to play this ploy as long as she has. She needs to get all the information out of what their life is like for this to work. As she spends the two weeks with her, as they walk to out in the forest, as Inko's like, I'm going to miss you. I say, I'm hugs her and she's like I'm gonna miss you too Inko all but unfortunately all things must come all good things must come to an end as she sticks her hand in Inko's chest pulls out her heart as she crushes it in her hands as she falls dead as as Salem turns into her natural state Sorry, guys, gotta find a picture. There you go. Uh, she's like, oh, stage one of my plans complete. As she vaporized Inko with fire, it's, it, it charred the body with, with no remains. As she shifts into Inko's form, with ma you know, because of magic. And she's like, I have about two weeks to practice on this. Of on this uh, Assad before my husband comes home. That's an odd, that's an odd feeling. After all, I killed my last husband. I killed my last husband. As you know, Salem, you know, reincarnate, blah, blah, blah. The whole body switching thing, that's weird, but because of Osmond's, you know, nifty. I don't know if Salem knows about that, but um, that's for, I, I know at some point she knows, but I'm not sure if she knows from the very beginning, but just for her story's sake, she does. Salem, a.k.a. Inko now, as takes the role as the wife, as the daily routine of Inko. As Asashi finally gets home, as she greets his, his wife, as, as she asks, how did Salem, um, did Salem make it all right? As Inko's like, yeah, she made this fine. I, I made dinner. Uh, she makes dinner as, well, she did, as, you know, they talk, and the time, per, the time progressed as, the thing, the time progressed as, let's say about, like, for story's sake, about a year after, you know, the whole um, killing Inko thing happened, as, Sorry, guys. I need to try to say this right. As Inko becomes pregnant, that's how that's just going to work. As as we cut to, you know, some time passed during the pregnancy, as you know, we have AKA Inko giving birth to her daughter, her loyal pawn that will do anything she says as long as long as she raises, as she, you know, guides her the right way. 
Uh, she gives birth to, you know, um, Kennedy. As says saw she's there. As she gives birth, as they see, you know, the wolf features, as they announce that she has her she has her quirk already. It's some sort of mutation. As the Sashi sighs, it's my fault from my family. It missed a generation, Doctor. I know what to do. As Asashi knows how to how to cope with you know a mutation of this sort. Because he had to live with several several uh, siblings having a mutation cork like that, like a wolf cork. So it's a family line thing. As we cut to a couple weeks after they, she pretend to you know she gather her strength. She she was able to maintain you know her illusion the whole time. So she takes you know Kennedy back home. As the Sashi had to, you know, go back to, you know, work. So he's going to be gone, so. Inko, a.k.a. Salem, blew up the house, took her daughter, and portaled back to uh, the Ruby universe. And Salem thinks the whole um, mutation is a plus. Because she could easily use her for different, different things. She could use her for a spy. She could use to gather in, info on the faunus because of her appearance. So she could have different ways to use her f to imp to implement her in her future plans. As she looks down on her carrying a baby, as she's like, "You, my dear, are very special. Very important to my plans." As she pokes her nose, as the baby giggles, as Salem has a straight face, not smiling. As some time has passed, as she gathered her resources, her allies at to this certain point, as she made contact with um, wait, not 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 yet. Sometimes has it's you know her plan has progressed nicely to the first stage. Now she just gotta wait for time. All she does to do is a waiting game. She's already in process of the process of um, meeting Cinder. That's her next step, but she's gonna wait a little bit longer, just a little bit. As you have a little girl, just only start to find her a little girl, a smaller age, as she's skipping around. The halls of whatever complex Salem has. As she skips along, kind of, kind of, almost like push the doors out of the hinges. As Salem looks at her, what did I tell you about breaking my doors? Sorry, mom. As she hops down onto a seat next to her mother. Actually, you want to see me, Mom? Uh, did I do something wrong? As she looks down at her daughter, as she's like, no, you have done nothing wrong, dear. I think it's time for you to have your first weapon, your first gear. I think they're called gears. I'm not totally sure. As she has someone place a weapon on the table. Doesn't matter who. A Grim or, yeah, let's say a Grim. As Grim had it in the mouth, as it walking down, as it places on the table. And it's this right here. I don't know what to name it, so I really don't know what to name this weapon right now. So I'll come up with something down the line. She could use it. So she does have no gun mode. Her um, gaster blasters will be uh, enough uh, enough for that. She's able to use the second stage of his of her weapon into a um, a sword chain or a whip. Very devastating, and with her superior superior strength, yeah, it's uh, not good for you. As Kennedy eyes, as her eyes, you know, glee with joy. It's like really, mom. Finally, as she's like, yes. 
I will be, I will be um, personally training you so you could use this said weapon. Personally, as as Kenny smiles, as you know, she sees that. As she's happy, you know, deep down because her plans going together. As Kennedy totally idolized her mother, like head to toe, like she'll do any, she'll do anything her mother asks, just to gain, just to gain her uh, approval. As over the years, Salem has been personally training her daughter. When she's not doing anything outside of her plans. Well, it's part of her plan. So she's going to have plenty of time guiding her daughter. And getting rid of that whole happy, cheerful attitude of hers. She'll use that as a cover when she goes to Beacon. But she's a very serious toned person at heart. She she does have her mo- moments when she's kind of cheerful a little bit, but no, let's no scratch that. Let's say she's she's kind of cheerful, but when she gets serious, she gets quite vicious sometimes. She has that whole um, not split personality, but split mood change when she gets serious, so she gets. When she gets serious, her um, her demeanor gets very serious and deadly. She's normally cheerful, but once you piss her off, yeah, that shit's not going to end well for you. She's going to make you hurt if she doesn't kill you right right off the bat. As Salem's seeing her daughter practicing with her weapon. As it's almost time for, you know, the whole um, beginning of the whole Ruby stuff. But we're going to get this in here first. As Cinder bends down, kneels. You wanted to see me, ma'am? As she's kind of scared of Salem. (laughs) As she's like, yes, Slender. Oh, not Slender. I forget her. Cinder, I think that's her name. This involves the plan, Cinder. As Salem begins, uh, continue speaking, my daughter will be attending that academy soon. As Cinder's like, what? As she's her eyes widen as she's like, what do you mean, ma'am? Is she a part of the plan? No. I need her at that academy. I need her to get close to... close to any of the students there. For her future... for a uh, future plans. She's part of a future plans, but... her, um... Her being at that academy is crucial. Outside of that academy, Cinder, you're to protect my daughter. Am I clear? I put too much effort into her to have her be killed off. Yes, ma'am. Of course. As Cinder's like, ma'am, are we going to bring your daughter into the fold? As as Salem thinks for a second, as she's like, no. For my plans to work out the way I want it to, she must be oblivious of your actions and mine. Do I make myself clear, Cinder? Yes, ma'am. Understood. You can leave now. Now, before we stop this episode... This part, she's going to have, in case, in case, you know, things don't go her way when it comes to Osbin, 
She wants to have a backup plan just in case. So she won't like how how am I get this working? Um Kendine knows that her uh her mother is sending Cinder out as a spy, but that as far as the knowledge she knows. She doesn't know they're planning to attack the Academy. But she knows there's some beef with someone named Osden. The head director of that, or uh, principal of that school. But she's not going to dig into it because her mother doesn't want her to know. So she doesn't see the fit to go look for the information. She believes if her mother seems as important, she will tell her. So her um, whole going to the academy has to be oblivious to her why her mother would do this so that they don't have suspicions and, and use her for a later date. You have Kennedy finish up her workout as Salem approaches, as she claps her hands, as she's like, marvelous done, daughter. You have progressed quite nicely. I believe you're ready now. As Kennedy, Kennedy looks at her mother. Ready for what, Mom? As she smiles. Come, walk with me. As they walk, I have a special mission for you. Only you. My precious little daughter. As she, you know, shakes, ruffles her hair. As she's like, what is it, Mom? You know I'll do it, no matter what it is. I need you to go to Beacon Academy. I need you to get close to certain, certain students. Basically, a girl named Ruby Rose. She has a unique ability that would be problematic if she learned how to use it properly. Understood, Mother. What do you want me to do? Just get close to her. Oh, sorry, guys. Get close to her and, and maintain your cover. That is all. No matter what happens at the Academy, do not break cover, dear. As I would be very disappointed if you failed. As... As Kennedy, yes, of course, Mom. I would do anything for you. You know that, Mother. That's a good dear. Why don't you go back to your studies? Yes, 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 Mom. As she walks off, as Salem caught herself smiling, as over the years she does do care for her daughter, some level, but that's just deep down. That's not going to come to play too much later. So that's how we're... This is a good spot to leave it off. I want to apologize for all the information in, in, in the beginning. Usually I dumb it down. But this is a lot of it. For things how this... How I made this work in my head. I had to make... You know... It, 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 it required a little bit of brief description of how this is going to work. So I hope you guys have a good night and day. Judging by time zones. And don't worry, um, my Jack Frost deck will return when I get to the USJ attack and get done with it. Well, I'm going to have to do the USJ attack in one episode, so, or a part of one. It matters how fast I get through the Cork assessment tests and the Heroes vs. Villains. So, then after I get past, uh, after I do the USJ arc, or part, or whatever you like to call it. Then I'll be doing Jack Frost again. So that's what you got. And don't worry, my other series will return. I just, it's easier for me to, to focus, mainly focus on those two what ifs at a time. On my work days and on the days off, I'll be working on this one. And my, um, in my uh, Ginja Impact female Deku too, because I need to get back into that one. I have 
the ending set out perfectly. I just need to uh, get the rest of the story to that point. So I'll be working on this, this one specifically, and um, my other one. So those two will be working in my and my uh, other female one. I think I have going on. I think. Give me a second here. Yeah, once I finish my Geisha Impact female ducky, what if? I'll really I'll start making um. What you call it? My female ducky. What if female ducky was you know? What if female ducky was Wonder Wonder Woman's daughter? That one will be. I'll start making that one after that so that's how that's going to go for right now so catch you guys later bye